Hi and welcome to my personal walkthrough of Studio One 7. Today I'll be showcasing some of my favorite features in Studio One 7.0 and who knows, you might even discover a few hidden gems along the way. The first feature I'd like to show is instrument buses. I'm sure you've run into the problem where you've added a drum sample player to your song, like Impact XT or Easy Drummer, and then you've got all the individual output channels for the different drum instruments in your mixer, and you've named the first one Bass Drum, and then your track has been renamed Bass Drum as well, even though you actually have all the drum instruments on that track. And then, to get a master channel for the whole instrument track, you had to create a bus. There were always workarounds for that, but now in version 7 we have instrument buses. You can create them manually in the mixer, or you can go into the options and turn on this setting to create them automatically when you add a new instrument that has multiple outputs. And then, instead of all the channels just being added to the mixer, you now get a nice folder that you can rename and expand and collapse as you like. And of course you can still change the volume of the different channels or add effects and so on, but now you have this main channel that behaves like a bus. And it's still connected to the track and that means that you can also close the mixer and open the inspector and you can still access the channel strip of your drums here and change the volume or add effects. Let's go to the note editor and record a short melody. And you'll see that we now have a nice red frame that lets us see where we're recording. But what I'm really going to show you is the scale panel. And this is something that a lot of people have been asking for for years, because this is where you can select a musical scale, let's say major, and then enable snap to scale. And now when you move notes with the mouse, you can only move them to pitches of that particular scale. Okay, that's not new. What is new is that you can now create your own scales. And this is as easy as selecting the keys that you want to have in your scale. And now let's create maybe a diminished scale on C. And for C diminished, we need C, D, E flat or D sharp, F, G flat, A flat, A and B. And this we can now store as a new scale preset. And it appears here in the list and it also appears here in the scale menu. So you can also close this panel if you don't need it. But there's another new feature in version 7 and that's pitch visibility. Currently it's set to all notes, but you can set it to in scale and now you will only see the pitches that belong to that scale. So if you want to create a melody in a certain scale, then there are no wrong notes anymore that you could use. I personally wouldn't use this feature because I think you should always compose with your ears and sometimes there are notes that are not in the scale but would still go very well with the melody and I think that's what makes music interesting. But of course that's just my opinion and a lot of people have asked for this feature, so here it is. And the last option in the panel is used and this collapses the whole view and only shows the pitches that are used on this track. And I think this is really powerful. Perhaps, again, not necessarily for entering regular notes like melodies, but for example, if you're using sample libraries where you can trigger things like drum loops or string ostinatos. And then if you just want to create variations and use the triggers or key switches that are already there, then you can use this option and all the pitches that you're not going to use anyway will just be hidden. And since a lot of people asked about Harmony Wizard, yes, of course, Harmony Wizard is fully compatible with version 7. Without any additional updates, by the way, you can just use it as it is with version 7. It should all work fine. And of course, you can use the new custom scales feature with Harmony Wizard as well. So if you're a Harmony Wizard user and you miss a certain scale, you can now create it yourself and use it with Harmony Wizard. We have a new loop tool, which is very useful for drums or other loops. Let's say we are creating a new song and we have a one bar loop. 
And we just wanted to go on and on and loop to the end of the song as long as we're composing and creating the arrangement. So to use this feature I actually have two options. The easiest is I can right click on the event and select loop. And that will extend the loop to the end of the song, which means to the end marker. And the good thing about this is that these are virtual copies or ghost copies of the original part. So you can still add some new notes or change the notes and those changes will automatically be reflected in the looped part of the event. The other option, let's turn this off again, is to go over the lower right hand corner and you'll see the loop tool icon. And with this loop tool you can extend the event by dragging and you can make it as long as you need. And here's a tip that perhaps nobody else is going to tell you. What if you want to consolidate this looped event and render it into real nodes so that you can create variations at specific points? Very easy, just right click on the event, go to instrument parts and say render instrument tracks. And that removes the loop and gives you a real event that you can tweak to your liking. You could also press G to merge the event that does sort of the same thing but not really because it also extends the event if you have snapping enabled. So I would recommend using the render instrument tracks function. Dragging samples into the pattern editor. How does that work? Well, you can drag samples into the pattern editor. I think this is a huge improvement when you're creating beats with the pattern editor and Impact XT and you want to use your own samples. Now it's as simple as dragging a file into the pattern editor and Studio One will automatically assign it to a new pad in Impact, so you don't have to worry about that. Also new in version 7 is the Pad Controls option, which allows us to see a compact view of Impact XT side by side with the pattern, so we can jam with the pads, adjust all the parameters, and I think it's really fun to create a drum loop that way. And that brings me to my last point, which is kind of a small thing, but something I've been waiting for, which is that in Impact XT we can now easily move and copy pads from one bank to another. We couldn't do that in previous versions, but it's really important if you're creating a new drum kit or you just want to clean up the whole kit and move some of the pads to another bank. We can do that now. And here is a bonus feature, one of my favorite improvements in version 7.0 the visual display of MIDI notes on events in the arrangement has been massively improved. So whether you have a drum pattern, a bass line or a piano arrangement, the preview is just so much better than before and for me that's actually one of my favorite changes in version 7.0. That's it for today, I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and if you don't want to miss any new tutorials and secret features I may show in future videos, or if you just want to support my work, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to get notifications when a new video is released. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.